Butcher paper versus Goldie's method versus the foil boat. Which one is the best way to wrap your barbecue brisket? Well, my answer will probably shock a lot of you, but before that, some of you may be wondering what the heck am I even talking about? During the low and slow process of smoking a brisket, something interesting happens in the later stages of the cook. The brisket experiences the stall, which basically stops the brisket from cooking. Well, sort of. Basically, the evaporative cooling effect from the brisket releasing its juices and the heat from the smoker counteract each other, not allowing the brisket to increase or really decrease in internal temperature. And this happens when the internal temperature of the brisket reaches about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So some of you may be thinking, well, brisket is beef and so is steak. And at 160 degrees internal, a steak would be way overcooked. So why would you even want a brisket to exceed or even reach an internal of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, briskets are very different than steaks. And one of the most important differences is that briskets have a much higher amount of collagen. And this collagen is very tough and chewy, and it makes up a lot of the connective tissue that you see inside of a brisket. But when collagen reaches temperatures of about 180 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit, it breaks down into gelatin, which will literally melt in your mouth. So it is very important to get your brisket out of the stall. Because if you're in the stall too long, then the meat will dry up by the time the collagen breaks down, or you can retain the moisture by pulling the brisket during the stall, but it will be a very chewy brisket, practically inedible. But if you can get out of the stall in a timely fashion and get all of the collagen in the brisket to break down, you will have a juicy, tender, melt-in-your-mouth brisket that will give you a food experience like you've never had before. As such, pitmasters have found countless ways to get their brisket out of the stall, but today I'm gonna be focusing on the Goldie's method, the butcher paper method, and the foil boat method. Because first of all, these are very popular methods and a lot of people swear by them. But my main reason for picking these three is because of an experiment I saw from Jeremy Yoder on the Mad Scientist Barbecue YouTube channel. So in Jeremy's video, he went to Texas Monthly's number one Texas barbecue joint, Goldie's Barbecue. And they cook a foil boat brisket, which is basically wrapping the brisket with foil at the bottom and having the top of the brisket exposed, a traditional butcher paper wrap brisket, which is just like it sounds, simply wrapping the brisket tightly in butcher paper. And for the first time ever, the Goldie's team reveals their brisket method, where they cook the brisket unwrapped the entire time and then rest the finished brisket in foil with some beef tallow. Now at the end of the video, they have a panel of barbecue professionals and these judges try each of the briskets and say which one they like best. And as you can see, the results are pretty close, but the Goldie's method brisket got the most votes. In my opinion, this is one of the best barbecue videos on YouTube, just in terms of the information shared and the entertainment value. So if you haven't already seen it, make sure to watch the full 30 minute video linked in my description box. But anyways, I've tried all three of these methods multiple times and I definitely have my own preference on which one I think is the best, but don't worry, we'll get to that. But what I found very fascinating was the response to Mad Scientist Barbecue's video. I read some of the comments and some people were expressing frustration and they were basically saying that they wish that there was a definitive winner for this experiment. Now there's nothing wrong with this comment. It makes sense. You just sat through a 30 minute video. So a clear conclusion would be appreciated. I get it. But this comment brought to mind a trend that I have been seeing in the barbecue community, especially here on YouTube. There is an obsession with barbecue secrets. Like seriously, go to any big barbecue YouTubers channel and organize their videos by popularity and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But the problem with this obsession is you often see comments and I know of people who have sent messages to pitmasters asking some variation of the following question. What's the secret to your barbecue? And this type of questioning is honestly kind of disrespectful. Now, hear me out. Imagine seriously asking Gordon Ramsay what his secret to cooking is. What, what do you think he would say? For starters, he'd probably cuss you out and call you a donut. But after that, he'd tell you the secret is decades of experience. Making mistakes, humiliation, determination, and just working his butt off to get to the culinary level that he's at. Well, many of the barbecue pitmasters here on YouTube have very similar testimonies of just insanely hard work and sacrifice that has given them mastery over their respective styles of barbecue. I mean, let's just go back to that Mad Scientist barbecue video and check out that panel of judges. You got Lane, Jalen, and Johnny, who you can't see because he's behind the camera, who are all owners of Goldie's Barbecue, and Chuck, who's their pit master. And even before they had Goldie's, they have so much barbecue experience working at Franklin's, Friedman's, Valentina's, and the list goes on. Then you have Bradley Robinson, AKA Chud's Barbecue, who has been working with 
with Leroy and Lewis for years and absolutely flexes his barbecue skills and knowledge on his YouTube channel. Even Jeremy Yoder, Mad Scientist Barbecue, has a ton of experience and I honestly think he doesn't get nearly enough credit for the experience and knowledge that he has because he's been doing pop-ups and classes on his 500 and 1,000 gallon pits for years, he's legit for real. And finally, you have Daniel Vaughn, author, editor of Texas Monthly Magazine, and probably the number one barbecue critic in the entire world. He has literally been to over 2,000 different barbecue joints, and I'm not even exaggerating. Feel free to fact check me on that. At this table, I'd say you're looking at the experience of tens of thousands, if not 100,000 briskets, either sampled or cooked, combined. So of course the results of their butcher paper versus Goldie's versus foil boat wrap test is going to be close. All three briskets probably tasted better than any brisket you or I have ever made in our entire lives. They were made by literal masters of Texas style barbecue. And this brings us back to the barbecue secret issue that I want to address. One of my favorite animated movies of all time is Kung Fu Panda, which if you don't know is the story of this panda named Po who cooks noodles for a living with his adoptive father. But as the story goes on, somehow this overweight, unathletic panda is chosen to join the Furious Five, who are these epic kung fu masters to use martial arts to protect their homeland. So I love this movie because I kind of relate to Po. I haven't been barbecuing for very long, so I'm kind of like the new kid on the block here on YouTube. And just optically, I don't really fit into the traditional or typical barbecue image, stylistically speaking. But anyways, my favorite scene from Kung Fu Panda is near the end of the movie. When Po has all but quit the Furious Five and just goes back home to his dad completely defeated. And seeing his son down and out, his dad decides to cheer him up by telling Poe the age-old secret ingredient to the family secret noodle soup. The secret ingredient is nothing. Huh? You heard me. Nothing. There is no secret ingredient. There is no secret ingredient. So just like Kung Fu Panda, there is no secret wrapping method or barbecue secret that's gonna make your brisket magically amazing. If you cook a horrible brisket and then wrap it with any method, you're still gonna have a horribly cooked brisket. And on the other side of the coin, if you cook a fantastic brisket, I promise the wrapping style isn't gonna turn it into a bad brisket. But to answer the question plainly of which of the three wrapping methods I think is the best, I prefer the Goldie's method. Because for me, it's the easiest one to do. You just put the brisket in the cooker and then you take it out when it's done. And also you don't get tallow and brisket juice all over the place when you have to move the brisket like you do with the other methods. And another thing, the bark on a no-wrap brisket is absolutely insane. Next week, I'm gonna post a video of my Goldie's barbecue cook where I did brisket, spare ribs, beef ribs, and turkey Goldie style. And I'll go much more into detail on the experience of a no-wrap brisket bark in that video, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. But I can't always do the Goldie's method. Like sometimes when I'm cooking brisket, it just stays in the stall for too long for whatever reason. And I don't want to burn the brisket, so I wrap it in butcher paper. And when I'm cooking on a Weber kettle, a Weber Smoky Mountain, or a pellet grill, I almost always do a foil boat. Because a non-offset brisket needs as much time in the smoke as possible, so I like that the foil boat is exposed on the top. But I also want to protect the bottom of the brisket from getting burnt from the radiant heat that's blasting it from the cooker. But my advice to aspiring pitmasters out there is to just learn the basics of what a good brisket is and then practice with repetition and try all of the wrapping methods to find out which one you like the best. Because like the old Bruce Lee saying goes, I fear not the man who has cooked 10,000 different barbecue items once, but the man who has cooked one brisket 10,000 times. So get outside and get cooking so you can become a brisket master yourself. And to help you on your brisket journey, make sure you watch the next video on your screen where I give my in-depth brisket guide and tell you how and why I cook brisket the way I do. And I'll see you guys over there.